Good morning and welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet at 845 Plum Tree Lane in Somerset, Wisconsin every Sunday morning. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Spirit-led, Jewish Roots Embracing Assembly. We could use some help in this area to, to share the true good news message to the people around us. If you are looking for a fellowship like ours, come and join us. The worst that can happen is you'll go somewhere else. The best that can happen is you can sit under great uh, fellowship and some good teaching. I think, anyway. Um, today is October 23rd, 19, or 2022. I have it as, uh, this 22nd on my sermon. That's an oops. Um, we are going to be talking about angels today. And so the title of the sermon is, Believers Have Powerful Allies in Heaven. Last day's believers are being attacked relentlessly by Satan. Father in heaven, we pray that this word will go out to the nations. We pray that they will understand the truth of our, our heavenly helpers, those messenger servants. <laughs> Who you send to watch over us, keep us safe, protect us in battle and our defense. Father, as I preach this word, let me be a conduit of truth. Let your word go out powerfully. Let the seeds of truth permeate the airwaves, that they would move through all the assaults and uh, attacks and even barriers that Satan tries to attach to them, and that they would fall into the hearts of everyone in our sphere of influence and that they would be implanted in their hearts, and that these people who receive these seeds will be, have a hunger and truth after righteousness. They would have a hunger and thirst after um, your Son, our Master and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Father, I pray for our friends in Uganda. I pray that you will continue to work in them. You've loosened up some of the stringent um, COVID nonsense that was going on there but not enough. I pray, Father, that you will remove those leaders or break their hearts and make them into the people that you want them to be. We pray for our friends who are in Indonesia, Pakistan, and India. Father, I pray that you will bless them, encourage them, strengthen them, and if they get the opportunity to hear this word, that it would, that it would sustain them. For our friends in Cuba who are facing the extreme persecution that they do under the uh, communistic regime. We pray that you will remove that regime and restore holiness to the um, island of Cuba. We pray, Father, that you will encourage them and strengthen them with this word and buttress their faith, build them up in their faith, and help them to see the truths that are in Yeshua. I thank you for our friends' patience, Gina and Cindy, who are fighting the good fight, who have lots of followers, and are encouraging them to, to watch what we're doing here. I pray you will strengthen them with all might and power according to the wonderful work you're building within them, and that they would speak the truth with power, that they would speak truth to the fallen powers, and drive them crazy with the truth that is found in Yeshua. As I preach this sermon, Father, I pray that I will honor you and glorify you, and bring glory to your Son and to your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Well, filling up. At a gas station, my wife Julie watched an elderly lady fill up her car with gas. My wife stood wondering whether or not someone her age should still be driving. I was a bit amused. Now, to be honest, we have had that conversation. That's why I like what, what I read here. The elderly lady pulled up to Julie, rolled down her window, and inquired, Excuse me, miss. And Ju Julie asked her, How can I help you? What year is it? The elderly lady asked. Feeling sorry for her, she replied kindly, It's, a, it's 2022, ma'am. The lady looked at her strangely and said, Not the year, your car. What year is your car? I, smiled, I just smiled, and she said, shut up. And that could happen in my life, trust me. 
Today's scripture reading is Psalm 91, 1 through 4. Those who live in the shelter of Yahweh will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about Yahweh. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my Elohim, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. That's one of the best promises in Scripture. I love Psalm 91. The last days are full of spiritual warfare. We do not have to fear Satan's angels because we have powerful allies in high places, and I'll add here, at our sides. Over the last year, especially in the last few months, we have been under assault by the enemy because of our steadfast decision to lead the world into the truth of last day spiritual warfare. Satan has been relentless in his attacks on every front we have given him quarter for. We have lost some of the skirmishes through our own missteps and mistakes, but we have learned from them as well. Our lives have been turned upside down, inside out, and sideways by demonic attacks that have been made against us. We have prevailed so far only because Yahweh's love for us sustains us. 2 Timothy 1, 9 through 12 exhorts, Yahweh saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that his plan from the beginning of time to show us his grace through Messiah Yeshua. And now he has made all of this plan plain to us by the appearing of Messiah Yeshua, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way of life and immortality through the good news message. And Yahweh chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of this good news message. That is why I am suffering here in prison. But I am not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. We are strongly encouraged to stay the course set out for, for us by our Messiah and to stay focused on him because in him we will stay victorious and finish the race that he has set before us. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 reveals, Since we are surrounded by so many examples of faith, we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially that of sin that distracts us. We must run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. We must focus on Yeshua, the source or author and goal or perfecter of our faith. Yeshua saw the joy ahead of him, so he endured the death on the cross and ignored the disgrace it brought him. Then he received the highest position in heaven, the one next to the throne of Yahweh. Think about or consider Yeshua, who endured opposition from sinners, so that you do not become tired and give up. In these last days, supernatural events, both good and evil, are becoming business as usual. We are seeing for ourselves the supernatural take, taking place regularly without any reasonable explanation. We have seen that here at Hope Fellowship, haven't we, everybody? Believers are seeing an unprecedented increase in spiritual warfare that, uh, than at any other time in current prof prophetic history. It is not going to end. It will continue to get worse until Messiah ingathers us. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 exhorts, Finally, be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of Yahweh so that you will so that you can take your stand against Satan's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Demonic attacks and possessions are taking place ex exponentially without measure or limit on our friends, neighbors, loved ones, co-workers, and ministry partners on a global and biblical scale. 
In believers' daily lives, we conduct battle against rulers and authorities, the powerful dark forces of fallen angels who follow Satan the devil. If we are not being attacked, we are not doing Yahweh's will. If we are not being attacked, it's because we've compl become complacent in our faith. If we aren't being attacked, we are doing our job. We're not being credible witnesses. We're not being living uh, love um, lovers uh, to uh, those in our world around us. Satan is a vicious fighter. He's a dirty fighter, and we, uh, which we have talked about recently. To withstand the attacks of the principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and authorities, we must depend on Adonai's strength alone and use every piece of armor that Yahweh has provided for us. Paul is not only giving this counsel to the congregation, the collective body of Messiah, but to each individual member within Messiah's congregation. His entire body needs to be armored to the teeth. I'm sorry, armed to the teeth. As we conduct supernatural warfare against the mighty powers of this dark world or universe, we must fight within a, in the unified strength of Messiah's assembly, whose power comes from the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 10.13 promises us, There is not any temptation that you have experienced which is unusual for humans. Elohim, who faithfully keeps his promises, will not allow you to be tempted beyond your power to resist. But when you are tempted, he will also give you the ability to endure the temptation as your way of escape. Yahweh promised us that when our enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a supernatural dam to dispute his evil floodwaters. This is accomplished only by the Almighty's eternal power. Isaiah 59, 18 and 19 declares, He will repay them back according to their actions. He will repay his opponents with wrath and punish his enemies. He will repay the people who live on the coastlands. I can almost say it's California and New York, right? Sorry. Yeah. It was there. The people of the West will fear the name of Yahweh. Those in the East will fear his glory. When the enemy comes in like a rushing like rushing streams, the Holy Spirit of Yahweh will raise up a standard against him. When the enemy seems to be overwhelming in his attacks, we have an advocate before Yahweh, the Father, who mitigates our circumstances before him. He sends us a way to cope with them. 1 Tim Timothy 2.5 proclaims, There is one Adonai and one mediator, who can reconcile Yahweh and humanity, the person Messiah Yeshua. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message Elohim gave to the world at just the right time. We are given heaven's angelic protection from the enemy's seemingly overwhelming floods. Each believer, Jewish and non-Jewish alike, has been promised angelic protection from enemy forces. Psalm 91, 9 through 12 promises, and I love this psalm. You, Yahweh, are my refuge. You have made Yahweh your home. No harm will come to you. No sickness will come near your house. He will put his angels in charge of you and protect you in all your ways. They will carry you in their hands so that you will never hit your foot and stumble against a rock. Each believer is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise at salvation. He is the guarantor of our, our eternal destinies. He strengthens, teaches, and comforts us during our walk of faith in this dimension. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, You heard and believed the message of the truth, the good news that he has saved you. In him you were sealed with the Holy Spirit whom he promised. This Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we will receive our inheritance. That means we will receive it. We're, we're not, it's not might. It's not could be. It might be if you work hard enough. We have already re, uh, received our inheritance. We have this guarantee until we are set free to belong to Him. 
Yahweh receives praise and glory for this. The Holy Spirit is Yahweh's guarantee that we belong to Him and that He will keep every promise He has given us. The Holy Spirit is His down payment and validating signature on the guarantee. The power and presence of the Holy Spirit in each believer demonstrates the genuineness of our faith. His power and presence proves that we are Yahweh's children. He secures eternal life for us. Because we cannot do it for ourselves, people. Mm -mm. There's no way we can secure eternal security. It's only in through the blood of Messiah and the power of the Holy Spirit. His power-filled work in us transforms us into the image of Messiah when we were saved now and in the future. Our experience now is a, a mere taste of the transformation um, that we will experience in eternity. This is just a nibble at the buffet table. It is Elohim's life-giving Holy Spirit who gives each believer eternal stability, power, and authority to endure attacks from our enemies and be victorious over them along with Yahweh's angelic army. As for the natural and supernatural circumstances that are thrown at believers, we have been given divine and angelic intervention as promises to keep us until we meet our Savior and Master. In digging out uh, the deeper meaning of 1 John 4.4, 4, I found from studying the original Greek a whole new paradigm concerning the power and authority we have in Elohim's life-giving Holy Spirit. 1 John 4.4 4 declares, You belong to Yahweh, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, and is, who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the universe. And so who's the false god of the universe? Satan. We have power over him. Why? Because of the blood of the Messiah and the word of our testimonies and the angelic armies who protect us. And that takes us to point one. Now we get to meet. We have very powerful allies in high places the holy angels who dwell in the second heavens, waiting for orders from Yahweh to execute judgment for us. Angels are very powerful messengers of Yahweh. They work in the lives of those believers who are inheriting salvation, that is, in the lives of believers who are waiting for their full redemption. That's us. Elohim's word tells us specifically to worship him and not angels. Angels are fellow created beings and our co-workers in the good news message of Messiah's kingdom of heaven. Revelation 19.10 tells us, now this is John speaking, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brothers and sisters who hold and maintain the testimony of Yeshua. Worship Elohim. For the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. I fell. The Greek word for fell is pipto and means to fall on the floor prostrate before a superior to find grace and mercy and to submit and surrender to one who is of superior strength. At his feet to worship him. The Greek word for worship is proskuneo and means to recognize another's power by offering a special honor through laying down in physical prostration to them. Physical prostration with a person's face on the ground or in his or her body stretched out in surrender and submission was often the reaction of people in Scripture who received an audience with the angels. To tell you the truth, I've never really seen an angel. I've felt their presence but I haven't seen them in form. But I tell you what, if one appeared before me, <laughs> slain in the spirit, right then and there, I will fall prostrate before him, the, him because I know how powerful they are. So, I don't know about you, but I know that I would fall prostrate. 
Physical prostration with a person's face on the ground and his or her body stretched out in surrender and, and submission was often the reaction of people in Scripture who received an audience with angels. I wanted to get back on it, so I went back to the previous uh, sentences. But he said to me, See that you do not do that, or do not do that. John is quickly cautioned against any idolatry. Elohim's first commandment express, expressly forbids worship of any false god or giving honor to it. Exodus 23 through 5 warns, Never embrace any false god over me. Never make your own carved idols or statues that represent any creature in the sky, on the earth, or in the water. Never worship them or serve them, because I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous ale. Make no mistake, all these so-called bones that are in uh, um, um, museums of history that depict uh, dinosaurs and um, uh, human beings of different uh, genetics in the past are just myths. They are false gods. They don't exist. They're made of balsam wood and painted with varnishes and paint, and, or I mean stained with varnishes and painted with um, paint that makes them look like they're from eons past. I am your fellow servant. The Greek word for fellow servant is sundalos. It means one who, is, who serves a fellow servant who shares the same master or king and ally of one who is Messiah's servant. When John fell prostrate on his face, he probably thought that the person appearing before him was Adonai himself. Now, this is interesting. This is something I learned in my studies this week. The angels were created in his image, and the faithful ones reflect him perfectly. Imagine every angel, every angel, there are trillions of them. We don't know how many, but they all re resemble Yeshua in one way or form, perfectly representing his image. We're going to have that too. It'll take place in about a thousand years, but we're going to have that too. In Jewish thought and in context to scripture, plurality begins at three, not at two. When Yahweh promised his angels would protect us, he was in effect promising that we would have at least three. We are not to worship the angels who serve and protect us. We are sent at least three protectorates to watch over us, keep us safe, protect us, and battle in our defense against all of our enemies. And I'll add here both physical and supernatural. Angels are fellow servants of Elohim, created by his very own hand. They are not to be worshipped. They are not to be respected for their holiness. I'm sorry, they are to be respected for their holiness, power, and supernatural service to our Creator Yahweh. Second Peter 2 4 proclaims. Yahweh did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into Tartarus, in gloomy pits of darkness, where they are being held until the day of judgment. Heaven's angels, faithful and fallen alike, mentioned in Peter and Jude's letters, are given different classifications, ranks, and orders we must understand. We must also treat all of them with respect, whether faithful or fallen. 2 Peter 2, 10 and 11 says, Adonai knows how to rescue righteous people from their trials, even while keeping evil under punishment until the day of fi final judgment. He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire and who despise authority. These people are proud and arrogant, daring even to scoff at supernatural beings without so much as trembling. The word angels from the Greek is angelos and means messenger, the bearer of news. It is a, a rough equivalent to the Hebrew word malach, which is mainly used for heaven's faithful angels. The biblical term most commonly used for angels is that of holy messengers, normally seen as angels of light who serve Yahweh our Elohim out of respect and love and awe of his eternal nature. Angels are beings and servants created directly by Elohim. They served him prior to the creation of the universe. They were created to serve Messiah's assembly and help her walk in Elohim's will. Can you imagine that? 
from the ver from even before the creation of the universe, even though Yahweh no knew that we were going to fall into sin, he he made a, he he had the plan to send Yeshua the Messiah to Earth to die for us, and then his angels were all ready before even the first foundation stone of uh, of, of creation was laid to watch over us. What a thought, amen. amen. Psalm 103.20 declares, Praise Yahweh, all his angels, mighty in strength, performing his word, upon hearing the proclamation of his word. Praise Yahweh, all his angels. The angels of heaven for, from all orders are commanded to worship Yahweh. No matter how powerful they are, they, along with humanity, must worship Yahweh. Mighty in strength, performing his word. All angels are strong, but they must be obedient to Yahweh. Even they should bless Yahweh, giving him praise and honor. Angels are personal spirits. They have personal choice. They express joy at the creation of the universe. They rejoice in heaven over sinners who repent and put their faith in Messiah Yeshua. Luke 15.10 tells us there is joy in the presence of Yahweh's angels when a sinner repents. All of the angels in heaven rejoice when an unbeliever puts his or her trust in Messiah and Yeshua the Messiah for salvation. Each person ever born is precious to Yahweh. He grieves over every person who is lost. It is not Yahweh's will that all men should perish, but they would come to repentance. Those who reject the good news message go to hell, and it breaks his loving supernatural heart to have them, watch them die in their sin and not have any other opportunity to receive his son for as savior and they in, in effect sentence themselves to hell it breaks his heart yahweh and heaven's angels rejoice whenever one of his children is found and brought into his son's kingdom we too should be more willing to rejoice over the lost who are found for messiah Perhaps we would have more joy in Messiah's collective assemblies if we shared Yeshua's love and concern for the lost, dil diligently seeking them and rejoicing when they come to our Savior. Angels express concern and can be grieved by those they protect when they sin. John worshipped an angel in fear of his presence during the re his revelation of Messiah in the last days tribulation period. I mean, of... Anyway, angels are curious beings and communicate with one another. They worship and praise Elohim. When in human form, they can communicate directly with those they serve and protect. Angels have a hierarchy of leadership in the fivefold governing agencies. They wage spiritual battle with fallen angels and their offspring, the dead spirits of the Nephilim, revealed to us as demons. Angels can appear to those they serve and protect in their dream state, or they can appear visibly to the believers they serve. Their appearance and message is only for the benefit of their charges. Angels are described throughout Elohim's word as created beings of incredible power, authority, and brightness, being clothed in heaven's pure and shining linen. They are the Benai Ha Elohim, or the children of Elohim. When they appear directly to those they serve and protect, believers become awestruck or surrender to shock and fear. Angels usually have to exhort and encourage those they serve not to fear them, or worship them for that matter. Angels are described in extra-biblical books of Jubilees, Jasher, and Enoch, all three of which are scripture. Their commentaries and history support the original Old Covenant writings where all seven archangels are identified. And that goes to the next point. There are three orders or descriptions of angels found in Yahweh's word. His word provides us with nine classifications of heaven's servant messengers. Elohim's word lists nine classifications or ranks of heaven's angels. They are, were originally defined by the philosopher Dionysus, uh, Dionysius and have been utilized by theologians and biblical teachers for millennia. Okay, now Dionysius is 
the Areopagite was an Athenian judge at the Are Are I'm sorry, Areopagus court in Athens who lived in the first century. He was converted to Christianity by the, the preaching of Paul the Apostle in Acts 17.34. He was a disciple of Paul. He learned Paul's doctrines. The doctrines of these angels came directly to him from Paul. So we, we can trust what we have learned from Dionysius. Hebrews 1.14 asks us, What are all the angels? They are powerful beings sent to serve those who are going to receive salvation. Angels are servants to those who have inherited eternal life. Elohim's word reveals that all believers have guardian angels in the sense that nothing can happen to believers outside Yahweh's will. Angels are Yahweh's servant messengers, powerful spiritual beings created by Yahweh. They are under his authority. They function, their function is to serve and protect believers and proclaim Yahweh's word. There are nine classifications, orders, or ranks of angels that have been revealed in Elohim's word. They are divided into three orders, depending on their responsibilities, authority, and power. The first three orders described as counselors, governors, I'm sorry, are described as counselors, governors, and messengers. They describe all seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, powers, authorities, principalities, archangels, and angels. The first one is counselors. They comprise seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. The second are governors. They comprise dominions, powers, and authorities. The third are messengers, which, which comprise principalities and archangels and angels. The first order of angels contains heaven's counselors. Their classifications are seraphim, cherubim, seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. These beings are prominently described in Enoch, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. These classifications are defined in the Old Covenant writings, in the New Covenant writings, and in Enoch, Jab, Shur, and Jubilee. All of these sources contain the history and activities of the angels. Counselors are active around Elohim's majestic throne in praise and worship. They have very limited contact with humanity because they are responsible for worship of Elohim in his presence. Counselors dwell primarily in Elohim's presence and receive power and glory directly from him. Again, their three classifications are seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. These are heaven's angels. Number one, seraphim are in Isaiah 6. They are involved in worship and praise of the Almighty due to their love and devotion to him. They are dragon-like in appearance and are very powerful. Satan was a seraphim. He still is a seraphim. That's why he's called the old red dragon. He turned red after his fall, but he was bright white before it. They hover over Elohim's majestic throne and celebrate his awesome might, holiness, and power in holy worship. According to apocryphal books, the archangel Uriel is their captain. Isaiah 6.2 says, Attending him, Elohim, were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. Seraphim have six wings. Two wings to cover their face, two wings to cover their feet, and two wings are used to fly. They, all, they also hold candles and appear in the midst of many wheels. They are typically described as being red in color and covered with numerous eyes. They sing worship to Yahweh, the commander of heaven's armies and, and his holiness, seen in Isaiah 6. I made a mistake when I said that the, the seraphim were white. They were red. And, um, and they always have been and always will be. When they show up to, to allow people to view them, they show up as being dazzling white. And I'll leave it at that. Isaiah 6, 3 tells us, They called to each other and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh, the commander of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Cherubim are, descent, are described in Ezekiel 10. They lead in the worship of Elohim around his majestic throne. They are known for their divinely inspired wisdom and power. Ezekiel 10, 12-14 reveals, 
Their entire bodies, their backs, hands, wings, and wheels were covered with ice. Each of the angels had a wheel. I heard that the wheels were called the whirling wheels. Each of the angels had four faces. The first was the face of an angel. The second was the face of a human. The third was the face of a lion. And the fourth was the face of an eagle. The thrones are responsible for upholding and protecting Elohim's majestic throne. This is an incomprehensible mystery in heaven, but it is true nonetheless. They are completely upright, holy, and righteous. They are known for exercising the Elohim's divine justice. They, the throne ranks receive their transcendent power and glory directly from Elohim. The second order of angels contains heaven's governors. Their classifications are the dominions, the powers, and the authorities. They are extremely powerful angels from heaven. Governors are overseers of the constellation of the first through the third heavens, the both supernatural and physical, and elements of nature. Governors resemble humans and wear crowns on their heads. Colossians 1.16 tells us directly, He, Messiah, created everything we can see and the things or realities that we cannot see in this di or dimensions, such as thrones, dominions, powers, and authorities in the unseen world, Everything was created through him and for him. Principalities are mentioned in, 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 in Ephesians. Dominions exercise the mercy, power, justice, and universal authority of Elohim in all of the dimensions and realms, both physical and supernatural, of heaven and his physical universe. Powers are protectors of Messiah's body of believers. They are responsible for imposing order in heaven's open portals and preventing fallen angels, angel, and demonic rule of our universe. Say, authorities have heaven's power and authority and uh, to annihilate the power and work of Satan. Their principal responsibility is to work miracles in this dimension of space, time, and matter. The third order of angels contains heaven's messengers. They are classifications of their classifications are the principalities, the archangels, and the regular angels. These angels are heaven's representatives to humanity. It is through the third order of angels that Elohim exercises his purpose and plans on the earth and in his universe. These angels appear to fallen and faithful humanity alike to reveal their messages. And we are getting many reports from the Middle East where angels are appearing to Muslims, and they are leading them to know the Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. We are getting thousands upon thousands of testimonies of that happening. So it's happening today just as it did in the beginning. These angels are points of contact between heaven and earth. These messengers are dressed in full armor and appear in human form. Their weapons are of war are swords, javelins, spears, and lances. Principalities oversee all nations in this dimension. They are protectors of national leaders. They appear in human form and minister to humanity. For example, the Prince of Persia is a principality. Principalities command to the lower orders of angels and instruct them in fulfilling all of Elohim's commands. They are responsible to direct the universe and protect lands, nations, and peoples. Archangels are the most powerful angels created by Elohim. Archangels have wings and human bodies and wear heaven's armors. They carry both swords and shofars at Elohim's will. In Revelation 8, there are seven spirits referring to Yahweh's archangels. They surround Elohim's majestic throne. These archangels are the highest ranking commanders leading heaven's armies. Satan was an archangel, and he uh, deceived one third of heaven's angels, his charges, and they were cast out of heaven as a result. Angels mean messengers of Yahweh. Elohim uses them for various purposes. They are the lowest of angelic orders, but are still far more powerful than mere humanity. Angels are servants of Yahweh. Their ministries are to work in the lives of believers through Yahweh's express will and destinies for his children. 
They are provided to minister to our needs. Hebrews 1.14 again asks and reveals, What are all the angels? They are powerful beings sent to serve those who are going to receive salvation. That's us, people. These are ministering spirits or heavenly assistants mentioned in Hebrews 1 who are continually active today in building Messiah's body, advancing Yeshua's kingdom, and building his assembly. They will be responsible for the outpouring of the plagues, curses, and judgments of Elohim during the tribulation period. Each archangel has been given a name that describes his eternal missions. And that takes us to the last point. There are seven archangels found in Elohim's word and in Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees. Each one's classification is revealed in the names they were given. Archangels announce the majestic Yahweh's awesome presence. They reveal the mysteries of our faith, prophesy to Yahweh's leaders, and understand Yahweh, Elohim's will and eternal plans for humanity. Revelation 3.1 says, This is the message from the one who holds the seven spirits of Yahweh and the seven stars. The Greek phrase for who holds is echo, which is possessive. It means he who owns or possesses as property and to reign over, maintain control of, to grip tightly, and to exercise full control over. The seven spirits of Yahweh refer to the archangels. They are symbolic of the archangels who stand before him and his majestic throne. They are at the ready to draw worship to Yahweh. The Greek word for spirits is pneuma, which refers to spirits who have a higher position than that of humanity, but created to a lower position than Yahweh. Kai is the Hebrew equivalent to pneuma. Genesis 124 reveals, Elohim said, Let the earth produce every type of living being, Kai, every type of domestic animal, crawling animal, and wild animal. And so it was. Some theologians, and I'll say wrongly, believe the seven spirits of Yahweh are symbolic of the Holy Spirit. But Messiah does not own or reign over him. They are co-equals with Yahweh the Father not a person he owns. It is in the essence of being held holy to Adonai, or which that which is completely his. While the seven archangels may be determined to be holy by our triune Elohim, they should never be worshipped. They are held holy to Adonai. They belong to him. The seven spirits of Yahweh are the seven archangels that guard Elohim's throne. Six of the archangels who, who watch are named in Enoch 20. Enoch 20, 1 through 7 declares, These are the names of the archangels who watch. Suroel, Sur, one of the holy archangels, for he is of eternity and of trembling. Raphael, who is are one of the holy archangels, for he is of the spirits of humanity. Raguel, one of the holy archangels who take vengeance for the world and for the luminaries. Uh, the luminaries are us, if you uh, want to know what that means. We are the ones given light, and we share the good news message of light to the world around us. Again, we are the luminaries. Michael, one of the holy archangels, for he is obedient in his benevolence over the people and the nations. Serechael one of the holy archangels who is set over the spirits of humanity who sin in the spirit. Gabriel, one of the holy archangels who oversee the Garden of Eden and the Seraphim and the Cherubim. The seven archangels are called the angels of the presence. This refers to their role as archangels who stand in the presence of Yahweh or Elohim in his third heaven before his majestic throne. Revelation 1, 4 and 5 reveals, Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Yeshua the Messiah. He is the faithful witness to these things, to first the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the earth. All archangels' names end with the suff el suffix, el suffix, 
El, the singular of Elohim, refers to the triune one. The root name of each archangel describes what each angel specializes in. The archangels are Camoel, meaning he who sees Elohim, or he who seeks Elohim. Tradition records that Camoel was the angel who comforted Yeshua during his distress over his upcoming crucifixion in the Garden of Semini. Gethsemane. Gabriel, um, meaning strength of Elohim, or the mighty one who is my strength. Gabriel is the messenger of Elohim. Elohim's word reveals three occasions that introduced Gabriel, who brought heavenly messages to Elohim's faithful ones at their time of at the time of their greatest need. The first occasion was where he brought two messages of revelation knowledge from Yahweh to Daniel. He revealed the interpretations of dreams of both kings of Babylon and Persia. The second instance was his appearance to Zacharias where he proclaimed to him and his wife, Elizabeth, the birth of John the Baptizer. Elizabeth was pregnant six months before Mary or Miriam. The third occurrence was when he appeared before Yeshua's mother, Mary or Miriam. Gabriel proclaimed to her that although she was a virgin, she was pregnant with Yahweh's son. Japhiel, meaning beauty of Elohim. Japhiel, Japhiel is the angel that drove Adam and Eve into exile from the Garden of Eden. Japhiel is responsible for guarding the tree of knowledge. Japhiel protects and helps those seeking truth. Michael, My, 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 Mikael, or Michael, meaning who is like Elohim or who is like the Almighty One. Mikael is the commander of all the archangels and the leader of the angelic host of heaven. He is the protector of Israel, the Jewish people, and believers. He threw Satan and his fallen angels out of heaven. Raphael, meaning heading, uh, healing power of Elohim, or the Almighty One heals. Raphael was introduced in the apocryphal book of Tobit. He is the commander of the guardian angels. His responsibility is to guard the young and to watch over the travelers, or over travelers. Uriel, meaning Elohim is light, or fire of Elohim. Uriel was introduced in both Enoch and Esdras. He supports Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Uriel is known for his wisdom. Zadkiel, meaning the one of righteousness, or Elohim's righteousness. Zadkiel is the archangel of mercy. He is the angel that held Abraham's hand back from sacrificing Isaac. There are seven archangels, I'm sorry, these seven archangels will exact Elohim's judgments during the tribulation period. In all likelihood, it will be either Gabriel or Michael who will carry out, Pay attention! The bridegroom comes! 1 Thessalonians 4.16 tells us, Adonai, our master, Yeshua the Messiah, will descend from heaven with a command, with the voice of the archangel, either Gabriel or Michael, and with the shofar call of Elohim. Not all the names of the seven archangels of Revelation who stand before Elohim's majestic throne in heaven are mentioned in our Bible. They are seen prominently in Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees. Actual accounts of angels have been witnessed and recorded by many people throughout prophetic scripture. They were introduced in Scripture in Genesis 16 and are seen in it through Revelation 19. Angels are not merely occasionally present in Elohim's written word, but they are, they are constantly manifest. The word angel or messenger appears over 250 times in Elohim's word. Psalm 103, 19 through 22 says, Yahweh has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise Yahweh, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise Yahweh, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise Yahweh, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise Yahweh. Angels are described not only for the things they have done, but also for the things they are assigned to do. These invisible servants are brought to work in the lives of Yahweh's children. Angels are intelligent, moral agents, invisible to the human eye. 
although they are able to show themselves to humans in what appears as a physical form, as seen in Genesis, John, and Acts. By nature, heaven's holy angels are spiritual beings who are morally superior to humanity in nature and have supernatural powers. They reveal Elohim's wisdom and revelation knowledge to us. Angels were created by Elohim and praised him for the, his infinite wisdom when he created his vast universe in six days. When the angels were first created, they were untested and holy. Angels are part of the order of heavenly beings who are superior to man in power and intelligence. When visible to humans, angels constantly appear in human form to provide Yahweh's message. I mean consistently appear in human form to provide Yahweh's message. Sometimes, however, their, appearances, their appearance inspires awe. They are charged with caring for Yahweh's children. They serve them during times of greatest need and protect them during times of trouble. They were particularly active in the events surrounding the birth and resurrection of Yeshua. Angels are real and play a vital role in Elohim's plan for Messiah's congregation reaching the world today. In conclusion, Elohim's word tells us specifically to worship Yahweh our Elohim alone and not angels, because they are fellow created beings and co-workers in the expansion of Messiah's eternal kingdom. Angels are Elohim's messengers to help believers through times of struggle, fear, and doubt. They are sent to bring messages of Yahweh's love, grace, and provision to Messiah's followers. Angels are created beings who, and are not worthy to be worshipped. They should be respected for their positions and power in heaven and for the protection, provision, and messages they bring us. There are biblical, extra-biblical, and personal accounts of angels being active in the lives of Elohim's people throughout His Word and on the earth for the benefit of those of us who believe. There is an organized structure in the angelic realms. Profoundly influential throughout humanity's history, angels have been, are, and will be involved in humanity according to their designated ranks. The unseen realms of the, uh, realm of the second heavens is constantly described in Elohim's word as immediately present in our midst, midst, not as a distant reality, but as a present one containing angelic servants. Elohim's word teaches that heaven's angels are uh, set an example of enthusiastic and resolute fulfillment of Elohim's will. They fully worship and serve Yahweh, Yeshua as their master and creator in all obedience. Angels' primary function is to continue to perform ministering duties in Messiah's body and bride. This function has led to the concept of guardian angels, which were revealed to us in Psalm 91. Angelic activity has always been in conjunction with Elohim's will and prominent turning points of his divine plan of salvation from the days of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to currently. Angelic activity was... <clears throat> witnessed through the birth, death, resurrection, and ascension of Messiah Yeshua, and will be again when Messiah's followers are ingathered by Yeshua when he returns. In benediction, Psalm 91, 9 through 12, If you make Yahweh your refuge, if you make Yahweh your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, and you will not even hurt your foot on a stone. Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his shalom, perfect and complete peace. Amen, amen, and amen.